Rocks on Earth commonly form thin coatings from some combination of mineral dust, water, and biology. Mars has lots of dust, but minuscule amounts of water and no known biology. So what are these coatings telling us about Mars? On this episode of Mars Guy. After the discovery of a boulder on top of the Jezero fan deposit that made for a real deja vu experience, see episode 119, Perseverance pulled up to another one on July 17, maybe for deja vu all over again. Here's Mars Guy for scale. Perseverance began an in-depth inspection of this large crumbling boulder by deploying the drill on its robotic arm. This may be the highest deployment yet, providing an unobstructed view of the action on the rock. The time-lapse sequence shows the deployment of the abrading bit, starting with the autonomous tests of stability and rock hardness. The actual abrading operation stopped after only seven minutes, about five minutes short of the normal duration. My guess is that the software determined that progress was below some threshold, indicating a very hard rock that could create excessive wear on the bit. Still, after deploying the G-Dirt, the compressed nitrogen gas dust removal tool, the results were stunning, not because of what appeared in the abrasion patch, but because of what was around it. G-Dirt blew away not only the abrasion tailings, but also a layer of dust that had obscured an impressive reddish-brown rock coating. We've seen similar coatings since the beginning of the mission, but this one is the most clearly displayed. And the images here raise the question of whether the dark gray surfaces also have a coating, which is a deposit of material, or if this is just weathering of what's already there. If this were on Earth, and I can assure you it's not, you'd walk right past a coated rock without a second thought. Now the ones in the landscaping on campus stop me in my tracks. The coatings on the volcanic andesite boulders are remarkably similar to the ones on Mars. There's still some debate about how exactly they form, but there's got to be mineral dust and water involved. The role of microbes is not yet fully resolved. They may be actively involved or just passive participants entombed like other detritus. Obviously, the microbes question is profoundly important for Mars, but even the need for water is a big deal. In the current climate of Mars, there's so little water in the atmosphere that if all of it were condensed down onto the surface, it would only be about 20 microns thick in places like Jezero Crater, about 1 50th of a millimeter. But the climate of Mars goes through huge changes thanks to the way the planet wobbles on its axis, referred to as obliquity variations. Modeling shows that it repeatedly varied from about 15 degrees of tilt to 45 degrees in the last 10 million years. That means water ice at the poles gets redistributed to lower latitudes, so maybe that's when there's enough water available to make coatings. Perseverance attempted to get a core sample in a spot zapped with the pulsed laser of SuperCam, which exposed more of the coating but that effort apparently stalled out like the abrasion operation. The tube inside the coring bit still managed to collect some tiny pieces of material that probably are from the coating. As of July 27, the tube has not yet been sealed, so it's not clear whether the team plans to save this material or make another attempt. It's definitely worth the effort, though. Lifting the coat off a Martian rock and getting it into labs on Earth could expose the comings and goings of water on recent Mars, and maybe even microbial life.